Speaking of future decks, I'm looking at this uh, pre-order prices. Jace's Phantasm is a dollar fifty. Yeah. For the uncommon. The Rancor is probably like two bucks, isn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The reason I bring that up is because uh, Phantasmal Lord is still a card, and I'm wondering if that's going to be a deck or not. Is he an illusion? He's, he's got to be an illusion. illusion. Oh, he is? Yeah, he's an illusion. Yeah, run some mill and some visions of the beyond. Right, let me check that before I look like a giant idiot. Um, <laughs> Too late. Yeah, yeah, he's illusion. Creature type illusion. 1-1 one, one for 1, and uh, you that's get 7 cards different. in their graveyard. 10, ten cards. Graveyard. It should be seven. Or is it ten? It's oh no, no, that mill spell is seven. Sorry. Yeah, mill spell is seven. Yeah. Seven. Mind sculpt. That's not bad, especially with a bunch of uh, like, just illusions and take out. I don't know what whatever a shitty illusion is. The bear, I guess. You don't I mean, take even out bear. Up. You leave bear in. <laughs> the bear beats face. I think he's all right. Another. Dude, if anything targets him, he's gonna die anyway. I know, but that's not the same with the Jace thing, though, right? One for a 2-2? Two, two. You run 8-4 drops. Or 8-1 drops. 8-4 drops. Ugh. Um, yeah, I like that. That seems pretty cool. When when are Illusions coming back? That seemed like the aggro tech for a while. Well, because they came out with a blast on uh, M12. What? What kills them? Illusions. Dude, just run like blue, <laughs> blue white illusions and run the, run the exalted angel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Blow run the out. phantasmal dragon, and the lord, and phantasmal image, and the bear, and Jace's phantasm, and the fucking angel, and just blast. <laughs> oh, that's something to think about. The phantasmal image on that angel. Gee. Oh, yep. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah. And then run your vapor snacks and throw them behind. Yeah, that's just fun. <laughs> She's like, holy oh, shit. <laughs> why, why is Vapor Snag so much better than Unsummon? Like, if I was like, Vapor Snag's rolling out, but I'll still just play Unsummon, people would be like, why would you play Unsummon? That's okay. a terrible card. Here's the thing. Here's my opinion on Vapor Snag. Delver, when it came out, I guess it's still kind of this way. It's evolving in different ways, but it would really only hit you twice, and you would die. And the, and the only reason it could do that is because it would chip away at small things like um, Invisible Stalker would hit a couple points, or a Vapor Snag would do a couple points. Or I ran um, the Psychic Barrier, which is the counter spell that, that took a life from him. Yeah. I ran that a little bit. And like all you, then like you're kind of chipping away at him. Like maybe on turn one and two, you make it to swing with an unflipped Delver. Um, and you, you kind of chip away at little bitty ways like that, or you swing with a Geist and get in with the Angel. Mm-hmm. And then all it takes, you know, they get down like 10 or under, and then you slam a Pike on something, and you win next time you connect with them. So the relevance of that one life loss added up uh, with other things in your deck to where you got to the point where all you had to do was, was contact with, you know, one creature with a Pike on it. Oh. You have something like Moreland Haunt, you know, you're making dudes when they kill your dudes. So they had to have an answer every turn. So it gave a little, a lot of extra pressure getting them down to that point where Pike is lethal. Because hmm. it lowers their life and fuels the Pike. Okay. That's cool. But, but, but Unsummon doesn't do that. It just, like, those ones add up. And when you Snapcaster and Vapor Snag it again, it adds up, you know. Yeah. Definitely. So. Um. Man, that is... That's not bad. I guess that makes more sense. That's my defense for it. But, yeah, I'm not going to start playing that in summon. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. But, um... Whoa, what about this um, new mid-range version of Delver? Or you know, mid-range version of not Delver? <laughs> you talking about Esper? Delver or the one without Delver? There is an Esper version, and then there's just the blue-white mid-range. I mean, it's good. Um, Wait, which one? Blue, white, mid-range? Okay, hold on. I've been playing this, and that deck is awesome. Like, it's so much fun. It's like, Delver, uh, not Delver. Well, mine doesn't have Delver, because Delver's a pussy card. Yeah. All right, tell, tell everyone, uh, if they don't know, the difference between um, a generic Delver deck and a, this blue, white, mid-range deck. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me find my... I got the deck list right over here. Hold on. 
play the different shit. I'll tell him. I know what's in the deck. It's the same thing. It just doesn't have that. Grab a beer and come back. It's tap and sack. Oh, yeah. My beer is getting low. Anyway, sorry. Sorry. I was telling everybody that was listening to go get a beer break. Yeah. yeah. While you go grab your deck list. <laughs> um, okay. So the difference, the main difference, is they run the four splicers, right? Yeah. And you got your four angels. And then pretty much it's almost exactly the same. Just no Delvers. Cause, oh, yeah. Mm. Mm, just because Delver sucks. Well, like what I just said, it's Delver without Delver. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I think the design... Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. I think the design overall is the Splicers are in there to counteract Geist of St. Draft. Because he, or, can't get back, he can't get past a first striking 3-3 golem, and he can't get past a regular one. Yeah. Um, so or the, any get, aggro deck at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it's like the Delver deck built to kill the Delver deck. Or it's the non... The blue-white version to kill the Delver deck. Um, so Splicer's in there for guys to send trap, I guess, in, in the aggro. And then the Angel's in there to, you know, save your dudes, but also put up a big wall in the sky... Mm -hmm. on Delvers. Yeah, you know, it lets you hold up Mana Leak too and get crazy value out of Blade Splicer again. Yeah. Like, it, it's just... I, don't know, I love it. It's very versatile. Yeah. yeah. I'd probably say it's the best Angel out of all of them that came out. Definitely. Because it, cur it, into a it costs four. Fair. That's a big reason. <laughs> well, yeah. But I mean, like, actual tournament effectiveness. Absolutely. It just... It swings the game yeah i've killed a lot of worm coils just by flashing her in and bouncing like a blade splicer and having two tokens and just fucking people over like it's just it's the greatest alex loves this deck actually oh, yeah it is the great he loves it deck. so much i'm thinking about taking the tamios out though like they've been in here and some people are cutting them and she's just really slow like i'm not liking her too much at all for that you run snapcasters in that right yeah, I have Snap and Snags and Phantasmal Image. I'm thinking about replacing the Tamios with just two more images. And I have the Sun Titan. All right, well, I want to build... I guess it's kind of an evolution of the blue-white mid-range is the Esper mid-range. The big difference is, well, they add Lingering Souls in. Um, mm -hmm. They still have the, the Blade Splicer, um, Angel combo i guess uh they kind of they're kind of an engine they kind of feed off each other and then it also has the image um, sun titan combo which i guess you're running in your blue white um not all yeah. the blue whites run it but i i never really use it for that i either go after like a splicer or an angel yeah. even, mostly we well, can't grab an angel with it why not because the angel's a four drop to copy the angel? Oh, oh, okay. Spo okay, image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. thinking you are grabbing an angel out of the graveyard. I was like, no, I mean, I was oh, using you it. fucking rip somebody off. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, it runs like, you know, I want to run like three or probably th three images and then run two or three Sun Titans. And it also, uh, I may run like one Unburial Rites and then black is also for like removal. Like, you know, a couple go for the throats and. Maybe things like Tragic Slip. Uh, I'm thinking Tragic Slip because um, there's so many surprise attacks with with Angel. Angels, yeah. Um, if I have five mana open, I can flash in an Angel, get a surprise attack, and then kill their next biggest dude. Um, it kind of gives enough. me a chance to wipe their board. You know, if I can mm -hmm. flash in an Angel, block the Flyer, also bounce the Blade Spicer, make another token, double block a big dude, and then Tragic Slip their third guy. Like... They're they're dead next turn, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I mean, that's not going to happen every time, but I mean, just the possibility of something. There's there's so much surprise in the deck. It seems like tragic stuff may be okay. Yeah, that's not bad. Plus, it helps you with your matchup against Pod. Do it. <clears throat> Which I think would be your hardest matchup is you know, uh, stealing your Sun Titan. Yeah. With zealous conscripts is. And you know, like every pod deck now runs white, so they can have four resto angels just to bounce that Zell's conscript. Yeah, which is kind of what I'm brewing right now. <laughs> so, 
So I looked at both of these Esper mid-range, like the third and fourth place, and none of them run the uh, unburial rights, or not even one on the side or anything. Um, what's his name? Uh, Prozac was running uh, the Esper deck that I kind of want to build, and he was running two for, go for the throats. I think he had he may have had two or three leaks, and he had four Thought Scour, four Snapcaster, and he had one unburial rights. And yeah, this deck's a lot different than this. Oh it had, man! It had the it had the ponder, um, snapcaster, thought scour, almost all four of engine. So that's your draw engine. Mm-hmm. And then he was talking about your blade splicer and your angel beam and an engine, and then your uh, sun titan and your images with you know the one barrel unbarrel rights being an engine that mm-hmm. also feeds off the splicer angel engine. They kind of feed off each other a little bit. But having those three engines going separately, they also have a lot of synergy together because you have your your early, like, your card draw and stuff is kind of, with your extra mana, you do card draw. Mm-hmm. It, the stuff, the, the mana open at the end of their turn, you use for card draw. Early game, you use the Angel Splicer engine to hold off everything or attack or whatever you need to do. And then you have the late game engine. So it's just like an early and a late, and then you just fill in the rest with card draw. And it just seems very synergistic. I like so, it. It seems pretty good. I like it too. I'm not I'm getting not... bored of Esper Planeswalkers, but mm-hmm. I just kind of want to brew something new. It's either going to be that or um, 